Welcome to Describing Probability. This resource is designed for learners who are at steps one or two, perhaps step three, of the learning progressions, and who are beginning to develop an understanding of probability and chance. Now the purpose of this resource is to support learners to understand and describe probability in mathematical terms, or in other words, what's the chance of that happening? The chance of a particular event occurring as opposed to not occurring. Now there are six brief parts to this presentation. Firstly, begin with a game of chance of some sort to engage the learners. Number two, hand out equipment and have the learners discuss certainty and impossibility. Number three, define the perimeters of impossibility and certainty. Four, use equipment to explore those perimeters. Number five, generate and begin to find words associated with probability. And finally, continue to discuss and compare those. Now it's essential that you get engagement early on. And one way that I've done this is simply to get some old lolly uh, wrappers and wrap up some fake paper within those and place them in a ratio with real lollies of one to two into a bag. So that means out of every three lollies, one of them is real and two of them are fake. And then simply you ask the learners to describe what the chances are of pulling out a lolly and get them to put it in their own words and see what they come up with. And this can be used as a formative assessment approach to get an idea of how the learners describe and think about probability. And finally, allow some of the learners to put their hand in without looking and select a lolly. And uh, it's a bit of fun, it's a bit of excitement, and it gets people geared up for thinking about describing probability. Now that you have learner engagement, let's move to step two. Organize the learners into peers or small groups, whoever they're comfortable working with. Hand out a container with 10 black and 10 white counters, stones or paper squares. Now I've found that you can get good resources from the $2 shop, counters and stones and so on, or you can simply cut up two different colored pieces of paper into squares. Step three, on the whiteboard, write impossible at one end and certain at the other end. These are the chances of pulling out a black counter and everything that we do is gonna sit somewhere between impossible and certain. Ask the learners and their peers or groups to put the counters into the container so that it is certain that a person selecting one at random will get a black counter. You can let the learners discuss this in any way, but the idea is you want to be sure to use the word certain. Once the learners have finished that, select a peer and then cover your eyes and take a counter from the container at random. Now before you open your hand, ask the class are you certain that it is black? And ideally they'll say yes, they absolutely know it's black because they've only put black counters into the particular bowl. And so a good follow-up question here is, does it matter how many black counters are in the container? And of course it doesn't matter, but what you might find is some learners will just have put one black counter into the container or some might have put all 10, but the point is it doesn't matter. And then you might have a discussion, what does it mean to be certain? And the answer is there is no chance of any other outcome. Step five, you're just going to repeat this, but you're going to ask them to put the counters into the container so that it is impossible, impossible to draw a black counter. And of course, the learners will do the same thing. They'll either put one or 10 white counters into the container, and that's fine. And you just repeat the process again. So now you've clearly defined impossible and certain. Impossible none of the target color are in there, so it is completely impossible, and certain all of the target color. We want to move into this middle area. The chances of selecting a black counter, you know, what are they? If they're not impossible and certain, how do we distinguish between them? And what sort of words might go in the middle? Now, it's a really good idea just to ask learners to come up with words. So some of them might say things like maybe, perhaps, probable, possible, and you want to write these words on the board as well. Now, continuing with step five, Hand out the word cards that are included as a PDF, place them on the learner's desks, a set each, and ask them to arrange those words where they think they would fit, sitting between impossible and certain. So the learners will come and put them on the board or in their groups, and what you'll find is they will arrange them in a fairly consistent way, but you'll find a few words will be different across the groups, and those are good words to discuss. For example, possible and probable. What you'll find is that possible uh, is really any chance that's above zero. So that could fit anywhere at all, but you'll find people have different ideas of where possible should be. 
Probable is another one that people are often unaware of what that word probable means. But the idea is we're starting to distinguish categories of chance or probability using these words. Step six. Now after we've put the words into a continuum and discussed them on the board, select one word and ask your learners to arrange the counters in their container to reflect that word. For example, if the word is maybe, have them put black and white counters into a container to represent the chance maybe of pulling out a black counter. And then repeat this with equally likely, probably, probable, and likely. And what you'll find is that learners will be roughly begin to be the same. They might use slightly different quantities, but the idea is you want to discuss this amongst your groups. Now finally, for a follow-up idea, you want to begin to introduce quantitative numbers or percentages. And so we might repeat the uh, activity again the next day, even chance, equally likely, and so on. And we'll introduce percentage cards, and we'll begin to match the percentage cards with the word cards. So for example, we know that impossible would mean a 0% chance. Certainty would be a 100% chance. And an even chance might be 50%. And from there, you could move into 0 to 1 and so on, and more complex ideas, which is where you'd want to go. So just to sum up, the idea of this activity is that you start simple and you get learners engaged and seeing that it's easy and you can have good discussions around probability and then slowly begin to introduce the numbers after that.